Uh, sorry, I couldn't get around the weekend to give you guys a video, but I'm here this week, and I have a busy, busy week, but I'm going to try to get some videos out here for you guys. And uh, I'm going to address one thing that I got in from Brian Constantine, who's a member of the group. It was a question he had regarding canine sniffs, and uh, I'm going to read you the question, and I'm going to answer it for everybody. And I know we've gone over this before, but I want everybody to be clear on um, what you can do during this and how to approach it and use it correctly. And just so everybody understands what's going on, I don't want anybody to be confused. So this is what he writes to me. Hey, Dennis, watching live PD, an interesting case came up. Uh, came up. The guy was stopped and awaiting a canine to do a sweep of the vehicle. Operator stated that he did not believe the police had the right to do so under, under United States v. Rodriguez in 2015. I did a search of the case and attached a summary of the opinion found on Wiki at the bottom. If I am understanding the opinion correctly, there was a 6-3 to three majority ruling in favor for Rodriguez, stating police do not have the right to extend the motor vehicle stop beyond its scope to get a canine for any reason beyond the initial reason for the stop. Do you know any case law in New Jersey that contradicts this ruling? I know a similar situation on Life P, uh, Florida deputy, uh, where the deputy made it a point to explain to the camera that he had to take his time issuing the summons for the PC to stop so the use of the canine sweep would be allowed. If you could do a video on this, that'd be great. So I'm going to do a video on this and explain everything to everybody as in-depth and as clear as possible so you guys can all understand this. Now, uh, yes, so let's explain this whole thing. Where do I start? If you're going to stop a car and you call for a canine unit, you need reasonable suspicion. Where does that come from? Let me go to my notes here because I wrote some notes down. All right, so uh, State versus Elders, 2006. I'm going to read... Um, Basically, a little excerpt from the from the case itself. The test of a justifiable the test of a justifiable use of a drug sniffing dog is reasonable in suspicion. Uh, I'm sorry, is reasonable suspicion. The same test applicable to justify a request to consent to search. Here, the officers are lawfully entitled to bring a drug sniffing dog in because they had reasonable suspicion. We are satisfied that the troopers had articulable and reasonable suspicion to justify justify calling for a dog, just as. They were justified to asking for Leach's consent to search for the disabled vehicle. Because the trooper had the right to call for a drug-sniffing dog, his advice to Leach was a fair prediction of events that would follow, not a deceptive threat made to deprive him of the ability to make an informed consent. That Leach changed his mind about signing the consent form and agreed in writing to the search immediately after facing the likelihood that the troopers would bring a dog does not make this consent involuntary. So what does that mean? Saying two things. One, they have adopted from, I think it's, Let's see, what was the uh, original? I think it was Ponty. So there was a case, I think it was Ponty, was the case that, pretty sure off the top of my head, was the case that said you needed a reasonable or articulable suspicion to ask for consent to search in the state of New Jersey. And then what this court said is, if you have enough to ask for consent to search, you have enough to call for a dog. So in order to call for a dog in New Jersey, you need a reasonable suspicion. Now, for a long time, this was in 2006, for a long time, the rest of the country didn't need to do that. Until 2015. When the United States v. Rodriguez came out, and they, what happened was cops were stopping cars, and they were on what they call fishing expeditions. And um, cops were stopping cars for anything, not building any reasonable suspicion at all, and then calling for a canine unit and delaying the stop without any reasonable suspicion. What the United States Supreme Court said was, uh, no, you can't do this. You need reasonable suspicion to call for a dog. So the answer to you is, we already had this in New Jersey, okay? The rest of the country caught up you know, uh, 11 years later. So that's that's really the case behind it. Now, also still we have to this day is that if you're there and you're not prolonging the stop and somebody asked me about free air sniffs and we discussed this in, a, in, a, in the past thing, but be careful in New Jersey about doing free air sniffs. And my advice to you is build your reasonable suspicion. Don't, don't try to play the game of free air sniffs. Have your buddy who's the canine officer behind you and stop a car and say, oh, well, you know, he just happened to be there. Eh, courts aren't that dumb. So build your reasonable suspicion. If somebody's engaged in criminal activity, you should be able to build your reasonable suspicion to trip them up, to give you the right to call for a canine unit. Don't try to play these games with this free air sniff. New Jersey's not wild about them. Uh, I know we talked about this before. Dave Tingle uh, sent me a, uh, a link about the case in Belmar, whatever it may be, where they tried to play this game, and the court did not like it. So that's, that's just it. So I remember 2015 when it came out, people were like, oh, my chief says I can't call for a dog anymore. I'm like, oh my god, these people, like, <laughs> like, what? 
Like, could you imagine that everybody in New Jersey had to disband their canine? They were no longer useful. Any canine, any drug-sniffing dog was no longer good. Uh, and there's still people out there who believe that. So it's just, like, why? Like, read the friggin' thing. What's wrong with these people? Like, why jump to conclusions? Ask somebody who knows. Hey, I saw U.S. versus Rodriguez came out. Do we have anything in New Jersey that is similar to this? Yeah, we got this. We've had it for nine years. I'm sorry, 11 years already. 2004. You know, this came out in 2015. Where we've been way ahead of them. So let's not jump to conclusions when a new case law comes out. You can call for a dog when you have reasonable suspicion. You can tell people that you're calling for a dog. It's a fair prediction of the events to follow, not a deceptive threat to uh, not give, give somebody the ability to have an informed, make an informed decision on consent. All right, I'm doing off the top of my head. That's why I'm kind of like thinking about it. But um, come on, guys. Let's, I mean, let's use our brains here. Let's not like just jump to conclusions. So there's answers to everything. If you have questions, send them in, and I'll do videos on them. Uh, let's get this next class filled up, guys. Let's uh, Madison, May 18th. It's a, it's a fundraiser for the Triple Amputee uh, Street Academy. The first time I'm giving it, it's going to be a really, really, really good class. And then, of course, you want to see the more classes that are to come, streetcoptraining.com. And we booked our first out-of-state course in Hydesville, Maryland. June 22nd, we'll be there. See you later. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the subscribe button below. We're going to put a lot of stuff here on YouTube. You don't want to miss any of this stuff. It's all super valuable and can help you do your job better.